worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Sing, I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Sing, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Sing, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. And the word of God tells us in Mark that we shall love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength. So on this morning, I challenge you to just lose yourself in the love of God. I challenge you to let everything go and grab a hold to God's unchanging hand. For it is such a time as this that we need him to show up and show out like never before. Would you please join with me in prayer this morning? Most gracious Father, we come to you this morning, Lord God, just to say thank you. Lord, we come before you humble this morning, God. 
asking you to have your way in with and through us. Father God, we give you total control now, not just of ourselves, oh God, but even of this service. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to show up and show out. Father God, we need a move from you this morning. Lord, we need your glory to fall in this place. Father God, we need your very presence in this place. Lord, we need you to touch the hearts of your children, oh God. Lord, we need you to touch the minds of your children, oh God. Lord, we need a touch from you this morning. Your word tells us that we have not because we ask not. So, Father God, I come before you this morning asking for a move from you on today. Lord, you said in your word that anything we ask in your darling son Jesus' name, that it shall be given unto us. So, Father God, even as I end this prayer, but never my relationship with you, Father God, I leave this podium with an expectation. I expect you to show up. I expect you to heal. I expect you to deliver. And I expect your presence to do a new thing in this place. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. You're now turned over to our anointed Rose Hill Church of Port Allen praise team as they take us higher in the Lord. Oh! 
telling you lay blessed truly we are blessed do you really know how blessed you are the fact that you're able to be in service with us this morning view us online the fact that you woke up in your right mind you are truly blessed blessed more blessed than you know and while we're talking about blessings the word of God tells us that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive so I'm appalled to be able to open the invitation with you at this morning, this morning, at this time for you to be able to give. During our time of giving, we've set aside for you to be able to give your seeds, for you to be able to give your tithes, as well as your offering. At this time, we ask that the people that are in the sanctuary prepare your tithes and offering. And those that are online, there are different ways that you can give. And again... We thank you and we thank God for your giving. After this next selection, the next voice that you hear will be none other than our very own Pastor James Maurice. I don't know about you, but I came prepared for a word. If you would like to have some powerful preaching this morning, I encourage you to do some powerful praying because it's your prayers that will produce the harvest that you're looking for. Pray with him. And don't forget to pray for him, not just on Sunday, but every day. Because he carries the weight of this church on his shoulder. And he's trusting and believing God to bring him through. So just as he pray for you, I encourage you this morning, every chance you get, to pray for him, Lady T, and his family. Again, thanks for your giving and your prayers in advance. Be blessed. to lift Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we want to bless his name this morning. Hallelujah. Hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open, wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Hands up, hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high.
lights fade away Let all the other names fade away Until there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place
lights fade away. Come on, sing it with us. Let all the other names fade Till there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Come on and take your place. Jesus, take your place. Hallelujah. How many need him to take his place? Yeah, in order for him to take his place, we must be willing to give up some things. Yeah, we must be willing to remove ourselves so that he can come in and reside. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I need him in my life. Come on. Yeah, I need him in my life. I, I can't make it without him in my life. I need him in my life. The Bible says, I mean, the psalm says, rather, we lift him high. Yeah. Above every circumstance, above every situation, above sickness, above disease, we lift him high. Because he's given us a name that's above every name. Y'all don't hear me? That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. I don't care what it is that you're facing this morning. If you lift him up, I said, if you lift him up, I said, if you lift him up, oh, no. he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, the problem is we're lifting up too many people, we're lifting up too many circumstances, and we're not lifting up Jesus. I don't know about you, but I declare this morning that I'm going to lift Jesus. I'm going to lift Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you on today. You're so worthy to be praised. Holy Spirit, we humble ourselves in your presence. For in your presence is the fullness of joy. God, we need joy. We need your joy. The joy that only you can give. Hallelujah. Not the joy that the world gives, but the joy that only you can give. We need it today. In this troubled world, we need your joy. In our troubled lives, we need your joy. So Holy Spirit, we surrender to you today. Have your way. Fill us. <laughs> Fill us with your power. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your purpose and your passion. Anoint us afresh. As we prepare to minister your word, I decrease that you may increase. I open my mouth, but you speak through me. Let your word fall on good soil today. Let your word go forth with power and authority. God, that we would not only be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. That we apply your word to our lives and see it change for the better. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. All over the building, somebody shout amen. Come on, if you're watching us online, just shout amen in your house, on your job, in your car, in your kitchen. You ought to give God some praise this morning. Amen. Come on, can you bless God for our anointed praise team and musicians ushering us right in the very presence of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, we greet you today in divine love in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, to Holy Spirit. Thirdly, to you, the people of God. Last but not least, to my beautiful wife, thank you. To all the people in the house, bless God for you and for you being here. I do believe God is going to speak to our hearts on today. Listen, if you're online watching, uh, don't, don't be bashful. Share the word. Share the word. Share, like, comment. 
say something. Give me a, a fist bump or something online in the comment section just to let us know that you are being pleased with the word that's going forth and that, you're in, that you are enjoying it. Listen, this is a new year, which means it's a new season. Yeah, which means it's a new day. And the Bible declares that old things have passed away. Did you hear that? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new again. So whatever it is you was going through, I'm not talking about last year. I'm talking about even before you got here, even before you tuned in. It's a new day. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. And so we declare that this is the year of grace and favor. Grace and favor. After you have suffered for a while, after you have suffered for a while, God says, I will complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Favor. God has kept us, and now he says, I'm going to favor you as well. Because I'm going to give you some things, watch this, you don't even deserve. Hallelujah. Oh, you better hear me this morning. I'm going to give you some things that you didn't do nothing to get. Hallelujah. So we started a series on last week called Grace Anatomy. And uh, we talked about this TV show called Grace Anatomy, uh, Grave Anatomy, rather. And it talks about high-profile doctors who people hold at a high esteem, but yet they have flaws. Yeah, like us. Yeah, we have flaws as well. As well. But God told me to tell you, you're flawed, but yet still favored. Yeah, even with your issues. We talked about Jacob on last week. With all of his issues, God still favored him. With all of your issues, God still favored you. Amen? So I want to dig a little deeper. I want to take us back. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, starting at verse 1. It reads, Now the serpent was more craftier than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, From the the fruit of the trees of the garden we may not eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said we shall not eat from it or touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from it fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her and he ate. Verse 7 says, and then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Just for, for a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, the gift of grace. The gift of grace. I'll make it plain. Our brothers and sisters, grace is truly a gift. I want us to hear this today. Grace is truly a gift. There's nothing that you and I can do to earn it. Doesn't matter how gifted you are. Doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how hard worker we can be or may be. It still doesn't qualify us to earn or deserve God's grace. Hear me clearly. You can never be too good. You can never be so good that you're deserving of God's grace. Watch this. Because grace is not earned, it's, it's, watch this, it's accepted. Which simply means it's received. The gift of grace is received, never earned. So I want us to see this because that when we hear grace, the first word comes to mind is unmerited favor. Unmerited, which simply means we don't deserve it. Not only is it unmerited, but it's unearned and it's undeserved. 
But yet God, with his loving self, my God, still gives to people who don't deserve it. I don't know about you, but that gives me hope. That gives me joy. That gives me peace to know that even when I don't deserve it, God still gives me what I don't deserve. Watch this. The truth is, the church is most appealing when the message of grace is apparent. The church is more appealing when the grace of God is more apparent. But so sometimes the church, I say that because sometimes the church will have people to think that we don't have flaws. And people don't want to be around folk who think they are perfect. People don't want to receive from folk who think they always have an answer and always have it together. But if we as the church realize that we are who we are, only by the grace of God, then we can give that which God has extended to us. Don't deserve it, but yet he gives it to us. Here it is. Most of the times when we talk about grace, grace is acknowledged in the New Testament. But grace was not just, uh, the New Testament was not the beginning of God's grace. When we talk about Jesus in John chapter 1, around verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we saw his glory, the glory of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. That was in John. But when Jesus came in the flesh, he was not the first man that received grace. Oh, I'm going to help us this morning. Because when we realize the first person who was created, we see God's grace in Adam and Eve. We see God's grace not just in the New Testament. See, most folks don't want to read the Old Testament, but when you understand you can't have a New Testament without an Old Testament, you appreciate the Old Testament. So when you see grace displayed in the beginning, we find it right here in the text. The Bible says that God created man in his image and in his likeness. And he told Adam, it was not good for you to be alone, bro, bro. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a helper. I'm going to give you someone who can help you fulfill my purpose in the earth's realm. And I want you and her to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. In other words, so that the earth can be filled with my image and my glory. But after God gave all of this stuff to Adam and Eve, he told them, now you have everything. I've created your environment. Before I created, before I created anything, watch this. I created the environment to make it conduce, conducive for you to strive in. Gave you one don't. Told you you can have everything else, but do not touch this. Isn't it it's amazing that the very thing God tell us to stay away from is the most attractive thing? Y'all quiet in this Christian church. The very thing he tells us not to do is the things we find ourselves doing. He says, I provided for you. I've given you all of this. Now stay away from that. Ooh, but it's the that. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. It's the that that keeps pulling me. It's the that that keeps guiding me. It's the, it's the that that keeps luring me in. He says, Adam, he says, Eve, he says, this is what I'm telling you, Adam, first. He says, I gave you, watch this, some direction. I told you what not to do. But here he is, we find in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 says, the serpent. Crafty, slick willy, smooth talker. Eased right on in and found the woman and began to talk to her. And she began to talk back to him, and he began to remind her of what God said. Watch this. Well, with a twist. See, the enemy is smooth, boy. He, he knows scripture, you know. He, he knows the text. Some of them, watch this, there are many smooth talkers even in the church, and they know scripture. 
And they can quote them up and down, but here sometimes they take them out of context, which leads you in another direction other than what God was saying. So, so he tells them, he says, I do not want you to partake of this. Watch this. Here's why we should appreciate the gift of grace. Because God gave them everything, but they still walked in disobedience. After having everything, you still not satisfied. Y'all quiet in here. I ain't talking about y'all. Not just because I said y'all. I'm talking about us. How about that? We're still not satisfied. Here it is. Verse 6 says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight to her eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from it, she ate, and then she gave also to her husband. See, here's what messes us up. Because everything that looks good is not good because it, it looked delightful. Because it looked desirable doesn't mean you have to deal with it. Doesn't mean you have to partake of it. And whenever we find ourselves doing stuff that God never desired for us to do, we're walking in disobedience. So they disobeyed God. Here it is. God gave them two things that led to them disobeying. He gave them authority and responsibility. And you can't give folk. Got to be careful who you give authority to. Oh, I know I'm right about it. You got to be careful because many folk, this is the opposite. I gave you authority, but you don't want to take the responsibility with the authority that I gave you. Because with the authority comes responsibility. So some folk want the authority, but they don't want the responsibility. Here it is. He says, we must be careful that we don't allow authority and responsibility to produce vanity. Because sometimes we get prideful. And if we're not careful, we'll walk around like we all that. Just because God raised you up, don't start looking down on people. And you'll begin, we will begin to walk in pride. But here's the problem. God hates pride. That's what the scripture says in Proverbs 16 and 5. Everyone who is proud in heart, it is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. God says, I punish proud folk. You're going to get what you're not looking for. Watch this. Pride is an attitude of independence. Hear me. We have to be very careful because when you walk in pride, when I walk in pride, we're simply telling God we don't need you. It's me. And that's what the enemy tricked Eve to sin because he told her, surely God don't want you to be like him. But they were already created in the image and the likeness of God. They was already like God. But the enemy tricked them because here it is. And whether you want to accept it or not, whether you want to be truthful or not, we all can find ourselves if we're not careful walking with pride. Especially when our hearts are not right. Pride will begin to well up in us. The seed of pride will begin to spout out of us. And then we will walk around as if we're all that. Here it is. Dependency in self voids the dependency in God. So never get caught up in self. Because here's the thing. You didn't make yourself. So dependency in self also leads to disobedience. Why, Pastor? Because how can a person rely on something or rely in self when you can't even keep yourself? How can you even trust you? Y'all quiet in this Christian church. I, I ain't getting too many amens online either, but how can we trust self? We brag about self, but self ain't nothing. Outside of God, what is self? The Bible says filthy rags. We are nothing without God. So if God graced us with his power and his presence, why would we not depend on God? Watch this. So that's what happened to Adam and Eve. Instead of depending entirely on God, as God designed, 
their hearts to became their hearts became proud and looking to itself it deceived itself don't you know if you walk in pride you deceiving yourself because you you are making yourself believe something that's not true oh y'all quiet up in here i'm gonna leave y'all alone watch this verse 1 says now the serpent was more craftier because you think you sharp Boy, y'all, you think you smooth, right? But the serpent, the Bible said, is more craftier than any other beast in the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden. And the woman said, the serpent, he said, and, and the woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of trees, the trees of the garden, we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it. He said, if you do, you're going to die. This right here began the fall of Adam and Eve. But even in the midst of them doing what they did, God didn't kill them. Boy, y'all don't see this here. Do you, do you see grace? See, this is grace for me. It's God's grace for me. It's his grace because I should be dead. They should have died. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get to preaching too much. Watch this. The beginning of the fall was this. In 2 Timothy 3 and 1, but they realized this, that in the last days, difficult time will come, for men will be lovers of self. Did you hear that? Men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, rebellious, disobedient to your parents, ungrateful. Oh, yeah, do y'all see that? Do, uh, do you see that in the world today? Unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, what's this, malicious? Gossips, well, I'm hitting every area. Without self-control, he say brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. That right there. See, we rather please people, we rather please flesh rather than please God. This is what he says. Holding on to a form of godliness. <laughs> oh, shout that by Hey, Oh, whoa. Ooh. Hey, hey. Speaking in tongues with a form of godliness. But yet denying the power thereof. Because if God and the Holy Spirit that lives in me can give me power to speak in other tongues, he can also give me power to keep, to keep from doing some stuff. Y'all ain't talking to me. See, we, we, we believe God for power for other stuff, gifts and all that stuff. Why we can't believe God for the power of keeping us? 1 John 2 and 16 says, For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boastful pride of life. He says, is not from the Father, but that's from the world. And that's what the enemy was trying to do to get them to stop looking at God and focus more on self and the world's way. The same stuff he's doing to us today. We're so focused on worldly living that we forget about how to live godly. Ooh, I heard a mute right then. Watch this. It's nothing wrong with being in the world, but there's a problem when we allow the world to get in us. Because we're in the world. He says, be in the world. So uh, Jesus, even when he prayed in John chapter uh, 17, he says, Father, I'm not praying for you to take them out of the world, but I'm praying that you keep them from the evil one. So watch this. I'm so glad that God gave us the grace of, uh, the, the, the gift of grace, because even when I walk in disobedience, his grace is still sufficient. Not only disobedience, but watch this. Then, verse 7 says, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. 
And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loins covering. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. In other words, not only when disobedience comes, then disguises come. Now you got to disguise yourself. Now, you, now you're covering up stuff. Y'all ain't talking to me. Your disobedience has led to you now covering stuff. The Bible says the moment they did that, their eyes was open, and so now they see and see and saw stuff that they normally would not have seen. See, and that's what happens to us. When we get ourselves from the presence of God, see, because Holy Spirit keeps you from stuff. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Holy Spirit keeps you from stuff. And the moment we start walking in self, now self see everything. Y'all ain't talking. And self starts seeing it and self starts wanting it. And even though self know it ain't good for us, the desire to want it grows deeper when you're out of the presence of God. Watch this now. Disobedience led to disguises, but also disobedience also led to them being uncovered. See, God ain't going to cover your mess. God ain't going to cover my mess. And whenever we find ourselves walking in stuff that he never designed for us to walk in, you best believe that you're uncovered. They hid themselves. What is it that you're hiding? Don't you know he sees everything? Because that's some stuff that we hide. Watch this. And Holy Spirit lets us know that it ain't right. If you keep doing this, you're going to be exposed, but we keep doing it. And then eventually, and now we're embarrassed, but God gave warning. Before the embarrassment comes warning, but because we're so caught up in self, we ignore the warning. It is. Verse 8 says, then they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Watch this. They tried to hide themselves because they got full of themselves. Whenever we get full of ourselves, God is not with us. And now you got to cover up stuff because you keep messing up. Notice, they hid from God, but he still pursued them. Oh, man, I wish y'all could feel this here. The grace of God, even though they was hiding from him, grace still pursued them. Even though they was think, trying to hide, saying, I don't want him to see me, God says, where are you? Because God desires relationship with his children. He desires fellowship with us, but whenever we mess up, we distance ourselves from God. And his love for us still chases after us. Adam, where you at, man? I know you messed up. You don't have to keep hiding yourself. Where are you? Because I long to fellowship with you. I long to sup with you. I long to spend time with you. But don't let what you've done separate yourself from me. Watch this. It signifies two things. There's nowhere you can go that God won't find you. (laughs) The Bible says if you make your bed in hell, y'all ain't hearing me. There's nowhere you can go. You can't escape God. And there's nothing you can do that can escape his love for you. God says what can separate us from the love of God? which is found in Christ. There's no place that you can hide from God's grace. Hebrews 4 and 13 says it this way, and there is no creature hidden, there is no creature hidden from his sight, but in all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. 
there is nothing hidden in God's sight. You ain't that smart. I ain't that smart. I ain't that slick. I don't care what time of day it is. You can creep in the day, he still see. We can creep at night, he still see. Y'all talking to me? See, because some folks try to be slick and creep in the day. Y'all ain't talking. We think we smooth. So you fooling yourself? Because even the person you creeping, let me leave this alone. They're going to tune me off in a minute. Watch this. Jeremiah 23 and 24 says, can a man hide himself in a hiding place so that he do not see him? Declares the Lord. He said, do I not feel the heavens and the earth? I know everything. Matter of fact, I knew what you were going to do before you did it. I knew you was going to do it. Watch this now. And still loved you. I knew you was going to fail me, Adam and Eve. So what I did, I put something in place. Y'all ain't talking to me. Called grace. Jeremiah 16 and 17 says, For my eyes are on their ways. They are not hidden from my face. Nor is their iniquity concealed from my eyes. God said, I see everything. Watch this now. Just because God don't say something doesn't mean he didn't see it. See, because when I say say something, that means he didn't judge it at that moment. And that's why we keep doing stuff because at that moment we didn't get caught or at that moment there was no judgment. So we keep doing it thinking we got away with it. Oh, watch this now. Disobedience, disguised, and watch this. Here comes discipline. Verse 9 says, then the Lord God called to man and said to him, where are you at? Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. You trying to hide, but I still hear you. Because, watch this, you can't move in silence like that. You think you're moving in silence, but God says, I hear everything. And I see everything. You know, they got to understand, move in silence. You, I don't care how you try to move in silence. God still hears. He said, Adam, he says, I, I hear the sound in the garden. And he says, I heard you coming, Lord, but I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Excuse. See, when we, when we find ourselves walking in disobedience, rather than us take a lick, we start making excuses for why we did what we did. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I know I'm right. I did it because. Y'all ain't hearing me. I, I stepped out because. I stole it because. Which, which our because never gives us a right to do it. Here it is. Adam went so deep, he said, it's the woman you gave me. Boy, Adam, some. Adam took the blame off of himself and blamed God. Now, we laughing, but we blame God, too. Uh-huh. Come on now. We blame him. We may not do it publicly. Oh, but silent behind closed doors. Well, why? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Lord, if you would have been here, sounded like Mary, Martha. If you would have been here, if you would have, God said, well, what about if you would have did what I told you? We don't want to hear that part. Here we go. God says, I love you so much, even in your disobedience, I didn't kill you. Rather than kill you, there's a discipline. Did you hear that? Because the Bible declares that the soul that sent it was supposed to die. Y'all ain't hear me. For the wages of sin is death. So the soul that sent it was supposed to die. But grace says, hold up. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all. Grace says, hold up. No. And that's another way I'm going to deal with you. Here's what he said. Ecclesiastes 
I mean, uh, Ezekiel 18 and 20 says this, the person who sins will die. But God says, I'm not going to kill you, I'm going to discipline you. Sound familiar? Because the Bible also says he chastens those he loves. So uh, chastisement, watch this, and not kill you. Aren't you glad that some of the stuff that you were in, that he didn't leave us in it? Oh, my God. The, some of the places we were at, that we didn't die there? Some of the wrong thoughts we had and were speaking over folk, that stuff didn't revert back to us? Watch this. He gave Adam and Eve precisely what they did not deserve. Grace. Genesis 2 and 16 says, there were warned that on they were warned that on the day that they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they would die. Now, growing up, it was taught to me that this part of, of, of the text that uh, they died spiritually. I was taught that, that, that they died spiritually, but that ain't what the Bible says about them. They didn't die spiritually because they was already created in the image of God. Y'all ain't hearing me. And I was also told that the moment they did that, it separated them from God. So how can it separate them from God and then they, they were still talking to him? They were having conversation. It may not have been the, the greatest of conversation, but they was having conversation with God. So they wasn't separated from God. They were still in God's presence even though they were trying to escape his presence. Watch this. God says, I'm going to give you discipline in the form of of curses. I want you to hear me. Because the Bible says he cursed them. He cursed the woman. Do you remember that? He cursed the woman in her childbearing and told her that she was going to bear. Watch what he said. Verse 16. Verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 16 says, to the woman, he says, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbearing. Oh, I heard, I heard my wife say, mm. He says, in pain you will bring forth children, yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. All the wives says, whoa, whoa, whoa. But that was a part of disobedience. God says, because of your disobedience, since you didn't rule the right way, I'm going to let him rule you. And now all the women said, he ain't ruling me. But that was disobedience that's caused it. I'd rather let him deal with me and discipline me rather than kill me. Then he said, Adam, I ain't going to leave you out. Verse 17, he says, then Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife. Oh, brothers, can I just pause for a moment? Oh, Lord, I felt this in the Holy Ghost. Don't let our wives lead us. Oh, it's quiet. Because the moment, when I say this now, I'm not discrediting who God placed in our lives, but the moment we allow our wise voice to supersede what God said, we're setting ourselves up for failure. Now, I know why that don't sound good, but that's the Bible. Because the Bible says it was not Adam who was deceived. It was Eve. Watch this, because y'all so loving, and, and, and y'all don't mind trying to help everybody. So sometimes folk can come sounding good, but with wrong intentions, and then you listen to it, receive what they said, then try to convince your husband that it's right. Oh, I ain't going to hold no, no. All, all the married folk quiet. I heard some single folks say, mm-hmm. God says, the curse is me disciplining you and not killing you. 
Here it said, Hebrews 12 and 6 says, For those whom the Lord loved, he disciplined, and, watch this, he disciplined you because he loved you, and he didn't kill you because his grace is sufficient unto you or for you. Aren't you glad? And I'll deal with this a little later with the husband and wife. That'll be our first, uh, I'm going to come right back here. They're going to be uh, talking about our first marriage ministry next month. Because there's a problem in our marriage because of authority and responsibility. Both not being in the right place. One trying to be what they're not supposed to be and doing what they're not qualified to do. And it's causing friction in the marriage. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Here's what I want us to do. I'm out of here, B. Watch this. God says, in the form of cursing you, I still showed you mercy. Mercy. Did you hear that? Mercy. Because mercy is the compassion that you give to someone who don't deserve it. You should have received harsh treatment, but my mercy said no. You should have not been here today, but my mercy. It was David who says, goodness, he always talks to me in Psalm 23. He says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He says, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why is it? that we know goodness and mercy is in the house of God, but we flee it. Because we want to do what we want to do. Want to live how we want to live. And not please God in our living. But here's what God says. The Hebrew word curse, it also means obstacles. It it also means to render someone powerless. So God says, I'm going to discipline you but I'm going to take my power from you. See, because before the curse, you had power to resist. You didn't see certain things. But now that you want to move outside of me and do things your way, watch this, I'm going to take my power from you. So stuff that you can say no to when you're with me, now you're saying yes to it because I'm not with you. Self, hear me today, my brother and sister. Pride is dangerous. And Adam and Eve found themselves walking in pride and selfishness, but yet God still graced them, gave them the gift of grace. I can't, I can't leave this last one out. And then he, then he delivered because he then talked to Satan and told him because of what you've done. Your head going to be bruised. That's going to come somebody that's going to bruise your head. You know who he was talking about, right? He was talking about Jesus. He said, because of what you've done, watch this. The, 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 the great defeater, he's going to come. And he's going to bruise your head and going to bring deliverance back to my people. Deliverance that they didn't deserve. But my love went beyond what you deserve. And I still showed you grace and mercy. That's why it's a gift. Because there's nothing that we can do to earn it. Aren't you grateful for God's grace this morning? Aren't you grateful that it's a gift that I didn't deserve, but yet he still gave it to me? Come on, you ought to bless God for grace this morning. Y'all patty cake, and I say you ought to bless God for grace this morning. I know it was a tight message. I know it was a self-reflecting message. And that's what God wants. He says, son, I want you to remind them of my grace. Because when they start complaining about all the other stuff and not realizing that it could be worse, it should be worse, but my grace for you won't allow it. Come on, bless the Lord on today. I said bless the Lord on Hallelujah.
Father, we thank you. Thank you for your amazing grace. God, I thank you for your love looking beyond our faults and constantly supplying our needs. God, we thank you that you didn't leave us where we were. Hallelujah. But God, you delivered us from sin and evil. And your grace still covers us. Thank you for your grace. God, there may be, may be someone watching us today. There may be someone even in the building today that haven't accepted you. And Father, if they haven't accepted you, it's impossible for them to really receive your grace. I pray for them today, God, that they will hear my voice, but yet move by your spirit. For you said, my sheep know my voice. So God, I also not only pray for them, but I pray for my sisters and brothers. If we will be honest with ourselves, some of us have turned our back. Some of us have, have left the love and the direction that you give. And we're prideful in doing things in our own ability. But God, what I love about you is you still give us an opportunity, grace, to get it right. Thank you that you never change your mind concerning us. Come back home today, my sister. Come back home today, my brother. And thirdly, if they need a place a church family, a place where they can come and feel your love and grow, be empowered, be encouraged. And if you're leading them to Rose Hill Church of Fort Allen, we're glad to receive them. So, Father, without any hesitation or reservation, if you fit one of those invitations, will you come today? If you're in the building, I ask that you stand. If you're online, I just need you to put in the comment section that you want to give your life to Christ or you want to rededicate yourself or you want to be a part of Rose Hill Church of Fort Allen. Someone from this ministry will be in contact with you. So at this time, I ask that you repeat after me. Dear Lord God, Dear Lord God today, today I'm, your child. I'm your child. I believe, I believe that, Jesus that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is the Son of God and that he died and, that he died. and you raised him and from the dead. From the dead. I confess I Every sin, every shortcoming, I repent. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. This day, my life shall never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, can you give God a great big hand clap of praise? To all of those who are joining in with us, we say welcome to the kingdom of God. If you just accepted Christ for the first time, we say welcome to the kingdom. If you just returned, we say welcome back home. If you just became a part of Rose Hill Church of Fort Allen, we said we bless God for you. We're so grateful that you are a part of our family. On behalf of my lovely wife, Lady Trenise, and the entire Rose Hill Church of Fort Allen family, we say welcome. That's only one thing we ask this year. Hear me, that you stay connected. Stay connected. It's important, my brothers and sisters, that we stay connected. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. And we want to help you become all that God desires for you to become. Amen. Amen. As always, I pray that something has been said, that your faith has been heightened and your outlook bright. Amen. 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 Did you enjoy the word? Amen. Amen. I know it was tight. I know. I know. I know it was tight. But here's what I want us to understand. For where God has taken us, we don't need anything cute. Because when hard times come, you need substance. You need something that you can stand on. Yeah, something that we can stand on. The word, God's grace is sufficient. So I thank you all. And uh, once again, I want to say thank you to all of you who wished me a happy birthday. I really appreciate that. Thank you all. I celebrated my birthday this past Tuesday, and I really appreciate it. Uh, the gifts, oh yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for all of the love that you've shown, all the messages that you sent out. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm so grateful for my wife for blessing me with the opportunity to get a little rest. I'm grateful and thankful. Thank you all for all that you do. I appreciate it. You don't have to be nice, but you choose to be nice to me. And I really, really, really appreciate it. Listen, don't forget to join us next Sunday right back here at 10 a.m. Also, this coming Wednesday, Word Wednesday, we're back. It'll be the first Word Wednesday of the year. And all of our leaders, please hear me. I sent out a message to all of our leaders. I need leaders to meet me online virtually. We'll have our first meeting of the year with leaders. And now uh, we'll discuss the vision and where we're headed for this year. 
and I'm excited about it, and I need you to tune in. So please do that. All right, any more, any other announcements? Listen, thank you once again for all that you do, all that you give to this ministry, every seed that you sow. I pray that God would bless you abundantly. Amen? Come on, stand to your feet if you're in the house. Let everybody know that you love them. Your neighbor, just wave at them. Tell them I love you. Good to see you. Those who are online, we thank God for you. We speak the peace and the blessings of God over your life. We thank you until we meet again on this coming Wednesday. Go in peace. God bless.